But what I really wanted to walk uh, you all through today was something that in, in, in reflecting and is a framework for achieving really big things, big visions, big dreams, big goals um, that I have developed literally over a period of decades. And it has been at the center of my ability to accomplish things in nearly every context of my life, whether that is a complete um, change in career path, which I have done actually numerous times. If I, it's funny. Um, I found myself saying in conversation recently, in the past life, I did this. In the past life, I was this. And I started to realize how many wholesale changes in the way that I've stepped into my life I have said yes to and how often I've had to start from very little, um, very little knowledge, resources, relationships, really understanding of what it is I want to do and figure out how to make big things happen. Um, always stumbling and fumbling along the way, but often pushing through and actually achieving those things that were so dear to me, so close to my heart. And I started to really document my process and, and also take in a ton of research. As Brendan knows, as many of you know, I tend to live in the sweet spot between um, peer-reviewed academic research and on the ground, actual applied knowledge and experimentation. Um, and also I, I love to bring in sort of ancient wisdom into the process and develop them into coherent frameworks that we can all use. So over a period of years, I started to develop something that I call success scaffolding. And it's a really powerful framework that we can all tap to achieve big dreams. Um, and to also really understand what do I need to be thinking about? What needs to be in place um, before I actually start to take the first step that will increase the chances that will do something and accomplish something and make the thing in my head real, make it manifest in the world. So what I want to do today is just kind of walk you through that success scaffolding, the, the, big, the big ideas, the big elements of it. So the eight elements are what I call the eight P's, P as in the letter P. Um, and let's start out with uh, the very first one. So the first element in the eight elements of success scaffolding is what I call a picture. And um, we were recently in conversation and heard the phrase, um, this was just a couple of days ago, you know, like you, it's really hard to hit a fuzzy target. Um, and when we lack clarity around the thing that we want to accomplish, then it makes it really hard to understand what the steps uh, will need to be taken to actually accomplish it, what the resources are we'll need to harness it, what the time frame is that's realistic. Um, and also, it makes it hard for that sort of GPS in our brain to set itself at a particular point and then subconsciously start to work on and develop all of the action steps and the ways and the pathways that will get us there and that subconscious part of the process, in my experience, is equally important as the conscious process. As much as we plan and set in motion, um, our brain is doing a lot of the work without us even knowing it. And along the way, it's going to suggest shifts and changes and invitations that will make our ability to actually start and accomplish our dreams much more likely. So we start with painting a really clear picture of where it is we want to go. What is that dream, that vision, that end state that we so want to make happen. Think about this on two levels. One is specificity, make it as specific as possible. And the second is sensory, make it as multi-sensory as possible. So think about actually being at that end state and then start to literally paint a picture, a multi-sensory picture in your mind of what it's like to be there. Think about the way it looks. And that's what most of us start with. But then think about the way that it feels. Think about the way that it sounds. Think about the way that it smells. Bring in all of the senses. Imagine that you are at the end state. The big dream is there. You're in it. You're experiencing fully. What does it feel like on a multi-sensory level? Get really, really specific with that picture and make it multi-sensory. That allows us to much more easily figure out what are the steps that are going to help get me there. And again, that level of specificity and sensory input, it helps set that subconscious GPS in our brain on trying to actually figure out how am I going to get there 
and suggesting things that we never even would have thought of along the way. So that's the first P, picture. Create a really clear picture of where you're heading. The second P is purpose. Now, purpose is really important. And what I think about when I think about purpose is what's your why? So you may have this dream. You may have a vision that you're holding closely and you so want to make happen. The question is why? Why does it matter to you? Why is it important to you to make this thing happen? And the reason that this is so important is because as you're working towards accomplishing it, you are going to face adversity. You are going to face unforeseen circumstances. All sorts of things are going to tumble into your path. If we don't have a really clear understanding of why this matters so much to us, then when adversity comes into our path, when we're trying to make this thing happen or work towards it, we're much less likely to actually continue to invest the effort to keep moving, to keep working hard, to keep figuring out new workarounds and solutions when we don't really get why we're doing it in the first place. We're much more likely to give up. So we want to actually have a clear sense of purpose by understanding why does this matter so much to me? Beyond the fact that I just want it to happen, what is the why beneath it? That gives us a sense of purpose. And we can do this by a pretty simple exercise. I'm guessing when it comes to this one, I may not be the only one this month offering some version of this. I call it the three whys, or I've heard it's called the five levels of why, but effectively you just state your goal, state your dream, and then ask the question, why is this so important to me? Why does this matter to me? And then usually the first time you answer that, we'll come up with some sort of superficial, not super vulnerable answer, right? And then we ask again, and why is that important to me? And then we start to get a little bit closer to our real truth. And then we ask again, and why does that matter so much to me? And that's when we start to get a little bit more open, a little bit more vulnerable, and really understand this is important to me because on a visceral level, once we get to that, I don't know about you, but there's a tell that I tend to have when I get to what it really feels like my deepest driver, my deepest sort of like why. And that is, I literally start to have a physical reaction to it. I can feel my body sometimes almost shaking. And I know that this is the truth. This is the real reason why this matters so much to me. And this allows me to plant that seed. So what, when adversity comes, and it always will, there's no such thing as just a smooth path, when, especially when you're trying to actually achieve a big dream. Um, when that comes, if I can tap back into that deepest level of why this matters, that deepest driver of purpose, that's the thing that motivates me to invest the effort to figure out how to move past the adversity. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.